atmosphere, Father God. Let our praise, my God, be your breakthrough, oh God, when we sing, when we praise, and we say, and we call unto the name of Jesus, for you are worthy, 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 oh God, you are worthy of all praise, you are worthy of all honor, you are worthy, oh God, you are worthy, oh God, Jesus, 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 we call unto you, oh God. We call unto your name, oh God. We lift you up. We lift you up. Move in this place, oh God. Move in this place, oh God. There is freedom. There is freedom, and the Lord wants to give you tonight. There is freedom, oh God. There is freedom in this place. There is freedom in this place. Oh, Holy One, Holy One, Holy One, Holy One, you are worthy. You are worthy, oh God. You are worthy. We thank you. We thank you for what you're going to do here tonight, oh God. We thank you, oh God. We want encounters with you, oh God. We want true revelation of who you are, oh God. So let our hearts align with yours, oh God. Let our hearts align with yours, oh God. Holy, holy, holy are you, Jesus. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. all the attention on you, my God. We fix ourselves to you, O oh Lord, for you are worthy to be praised, my God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. the moments when I'm still in your presence when all noise dies down Lord speak to me now you have all my attention I will linger and listen I can't miss a thing cause Lord I know my heart wants more of you my heart wants something new, so I surrender all. All I want is to live within your love, be undone by who you are. My desire is to know you deeper and love. Throw my fears into the wind I am desperate for a touch of heaven oh, 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 You're the fire in the morning you're the cool in the evening You're the breath in my soul You're the life in my bones There is no hesitation In your love and affection It's the sweetest of all Cause Lord I know my heart Wants more of you My heart want something new so i surrender all and all i want is to live within your love be undone by who you are my desire is to know you deeper 
deeper and Lord, I will open up again Throw my fears into the wind I am desperate for a touch of all I want Is to live within your love Be undone by who you are My desire is to know
Would you direct our worship? Would you lead us deeper in, closer to you? We want to know what you want to say. We want to know what you want us to feel. We want to know what you want to say. So have your way. I want to know what you want to speak. I want to know what there is to say. So have your way, have your way. So have your way. Have your way, have your way in me. So have your way, have your way, have your way in me. Have your way, have your way. Have your way in me. Oh, have your way. Oh, have your way. Would your spirit flow freely? Would you flow like a river, like a flood? Come however you want to. Come however you want to. Come however you want to. Come like a flood, come however, however you want to. So flow like a river, come like a flood, come however you want to. So flow like a river. Come like a flood, do whatever you want to, do whatever you want to, so flow like a river, come like a flood, do whatever you want to, do whatever you want to, so flow like a river. Come like a flood, do whatever you want to, do whatever you want to, flow like a river, come like a flood, do whatever you want to, do whatever you want to, come like a river. Come like a flood, do whatever you want to, do whatever you want to. So come like a fire, or come like a flood, do whatever you want to, do whatever you want to. So come like a fire. Come like a flood 
do whatever you want to do whatever you want to so come like a fire come like a flame do whatever you want to do whatever you want to so come like a fire come like a flame do whatever you want to do whatever you want to so come like a fire come like a flood do whatever you want to do whatever you want to Won't you fill us up? 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 Won't you fill? Won't you fill? Won't you fill us up? 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 Won't you fill us up?
Thank you, Jesus. So we felt that this service, um, some testimonies uh, should be shared. And uh, we're going to take just a quick break um, between um, that we're going to get right back into worshiping with song. But um, I was asked to share today. Um, and not how I met the Lord, but really how we'll see there, but how he really met me in a place that I never thought that he could really reach me at. And at this point, I was already saved. Um, at 14, I um, accepted the Lord and uh, I put my trust in him, started walking out in obedience, reading the word. And um, I've always grown up in church, but at 14, I, I really decided to um, just make Jesus my, my personal savior and just to follow him. And, um, and yeah, from there it began a roller coaster, a journey that beautiful, hard, but rewarding. And um, it came a point where um, I came back from this summer camp that I got saved at at 14. And at home, my mom was serving the Lord, but not the whole household was really in so I, I came back on fire and I was like oh I'm gonna preach the gospel I'm gonna spread the word and I'm gonna do this and you know being 14 you know and, and I just met the Lord I had a crazy encounter and I was like Lord I'm gonna do this for you I'm gonna do this for you um, but months went by and I, I just started to lose that flame that God had deposited in me that cleansed my anger issues that I had and um murderous thoughts crazy things at 14 years old hatred and um as i entered high school um, a new change you know if you've been in high school <laughs> um especially now to any young people that are here it's it's a difference and um and i started adjusting and um i started um getting into the wrong things i Actually, in the eighth grade, um, I was introduced to pornography and started having a heavy addiction, um, started having a perversion in everything that I saw. And um, I started losing what God had given me, the gift, of, the fire that he was giving me. I started putting it out with just all of this stuff. But here came high school and it was a difference. It was a change. Freshman year, I started to fit in people pleaser my whole life and um just did whatever people liked um if i did something and there was an awkward silence i was like oh i can't do that anymore and um got to a place where i got really depressed and i wasn't really living in a place where i was myself and um sometime i i don't remember clearly but between freshman and sophomore year um the demonic oppression that I felt at home was very heavy, heavy. Um, just completely just dark, like heavy. And um, all my life I've dealt with demonic oppression actually, um, but it got worse in high school just because whatever the enemy tried doing. And um, there was this one night um, as I was I was just laying in bed and I was going to sleep and I went to bed and I got woken up in the middle of the night and um, I felt just a, like someone was sitting on my chest and I would hear like voices in reverse coming from my, my heater noise and I would hear things, understand things like it was crazy and um, I would see kind of like flickering shadows like my door, bedroom door kind of being open but it wasn't open, it was like crazy crazy things that was just happening and I was hearing voices I was feeling this darkness and um, depression and um, all I was hearing on loop in my head was all the voices that told me you're worthless like what are you doing like all these voices that I tried to please and I was trying to please in high school and all this and all of my life and coming back to me in my head just you're worthless like what is that like and um and I started believing it. I said, all right, I'm worthless. I'm not worth anything. 
I just try pleasing people. I'm not even myself. I don't even have an identity. Who am I? And and um, that night I, I got up and um, I just remember going to my kitchen and um, I just started like something just drew me like it was really, really off. And I just got drawn into the kitchen and um, I just started staring at, at a knife rack. And I was like, Lord, I was just saying like my life isn't isn't worth anything. But I was just looking at it and something snapped and I was like, what am I doing? Like I, I was thinking of suicide at the time and I was like, what am I doing? And um, it, it freaked me out. So I, I, I started sobbing and I, I ran up upstairs and I was like, Lord, I, what, what was that? Like, I, I don't get that. I don't understand. And um, a few days to go by, you know, back, you know, worship happened on Sunday and, you know, oh, I'm back. I'm good. I'm good. And um, back down. A couple of days later, then the same thing happened again. In the middle of the night, I woke up with heaviness in my chest, voices, voices. And, um, and then I found myself again in my kitchen, but this time I was holding the knife. And I was like, as I was like noticing what I was doing, I was holding onto it. I put it back and I, I went back again and I sobbed and I was like, Lord, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't want to take my life. I don't want to do this. And I um, went back upstairs and, and a few days went by, same thing. I come back to church, I go to school, you know, everything's all good, sports, all that, but and then one night it happens again where I wake up again and it was just an immense pressure, unbelievable pressure, and and I find myself in my kitchen again and this time I, I'm just numb. I don't feel anything. Nothing is snapping me out. And I said, This is it. I'm not going to go past tonight. My parents are going to find me here. And um, grab the knife, but as this, this is where the Lord stepped in, but I kid you not, I'm going to just swing at myself to just whatever. I, I don't know how to do, you know, I didn't know how to, you know, end my life. So I was just desperate. I wanted it to end. And as I was going to swing from my chest to stab myself repeatedly, my arm just stops right here in the middle, right as I'm about to hit myself with the knife. And I kid you not, my forearm has like an imprint of a hand and just like grabbing my hand, stopping me and fling, throws, like pushes my arm away and my hand opens and I just drop the knife. I felt the immense presence of God just fall on me and I tell you it was the mercy of God that day that I'm still standing here because he reminded me who he was who he revealed himself to be when I was 14 and he showed me my worth he said I love you Joshua I made you for a purpose and I've never felt anything like that any kind of love that divine that deep I've never felt something like that in my life and I just fell to my knees and I sobbed and I said Lord I'm sorry I'm sorry Lord and he just showed me my worth and he gave me an identity that day I thought I had it when I was 14 but he gave me something new And from that day forward, it's still been a roller coaster. But I truly believe that he wanted me to share this today. Because in these days, there's so many people walking around with suicidal thoughts, walking around with depression, waking up in the middle of the night and having insomnia, not being able to sleep. But he, if he did it for me at the final second, If he did it for me at the final second, I know he can do it for someone here before they even get to that place where I was waking up. That he can set people free in this very moment. 
because the word says, the word of God says, it's by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony that we overcome. It's by the price that Jesus paid that we have the freedom. So I just wanted to share that, to encourage someone that you're not alone, that you don't have to be having thoughts, intruding thoughts that aren't yours because they come from the pits of hell. They're not yours. They're not yours because we have someone that's after our life, someone that's jealous for the life that we have and wants us to see it as worthless, but that's a lie. So I thank God. All glory goes to God for that. All glory goes to God. There's no science that can say my arm had a muscle spasm. That's foolishness. That's foolishness. The Lord saved me that day. The Lord saved me that day. So I hope that encourages you guys. And um, I'm just going to go back into a time of worship. And um, yeah, just um, sitting in his presence again. And all glory to God. Father, we ask you to meet us where we are tonight. Father God, we thank you. I thank you, God. Because you value every life that's in this room. Jesus, you paid the price for each of us, regardless if we would say yes to you or not. Without the promise of my life, you gave your own. I thank you so much, God. I thank you so much, God. believe the Lord is working on some hearts. And so we're just going to take this time to sit in stillness. And just hear what he has to say. If he's speaking to you, respond. Listen to him. Listen to his voice. He wants to set some people free tonight.
How you guys doing? Jeremiah 29, 11 reads, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and the future. That's where my testimony starts. Long before I physically existed, Long before I was born, my testimony started with God knowing that he had a calling on my life. Way before I even knew it. Then, I was born in Trinidad and Tobago in the year 1985. Not knowing who I was. I was just born another human existing in life. I wasn't living life, I was just existing. R raised by my mom, I'm the youngest of three boys. My mom grabbed my two brothers and I, and we migrated from Trinidad and Tobago to the United States of America back in 1992. I was seven years old. I grew up right here in Jersey City Heights. Spent most of my life in Jersey City Heights. I graduated from public school number eight. After that, I transitioned to Hudson Catholic High School. Throughout all my years in school, um, all my years growing up, 
I basically was that kid that had no guidance. Very smart, very intelligent, but I had nobody to put me on that path to say, hey, this is the way you should go. So just like any other kid, if you leave that kid idle, you leave that kid alone, that kid is gonna choose their own paths. Last night, As I wrote this testimony last night, the last time I cried so much as I'm writing this testimony was years ago. And I told myself I was gonna read off everything I wrote, but I don't even feel like holding my phone right now. So what happened was, <sighs> growing up I sought to do things my own way. I was raised without a father, and my mom did all she can with what she had to raise me. I was raised being what I called being dragged to church. The reason why I called it being dragged to church because my mom was taking me to church. But then outside of church, when we got back home, the lifestyle that Christ was telling us to live, we weren't living it back at home. So I didn't know what I was walking into that building for. But with God, you don't have to know because God knows all things. Even if you don't understand, as long as you just sit there and you trust him, later on, what, what his purpose is for your life will happen. At the age of 22, after not having no guidance to fill my insecurities of being raised fatherless, to fill my insecurities of me thinking that I wasn't good enough, to fill my anger, because I was so angry growing up because what we adults, we assume, you know, kids aren't paying attention, but they are paying attention. And I paid attention I paid attention to my father hitting my mother. And I was too small to defend her. Too small to help her. So with that being said, at the age of 22, I started selling drugs. I started hustling. And within selling drugs, I thought I found my purpose. I thought I found who I was. I started hanging around with people that I thought were my friends. I started hanging around with people that I thought loved me. And the funny thing about our flesh, your flesh always seeks comfort. 
if it's correct your flesh don't want it if it's of god your flesh does not want it so i started selling drugs And over time, I became a pretty, a pretty good drug dealer. So I thought. I started selling drugs when I was 22 years old. I got arrested a couple times from 22. As soon as I got arrested, I made bail within hours. So I had a quick bail, so I started getting cocky. I started thinking I was above certain things that I wasn't. And then year 26 came. I got locked up and I got charged with trafficking of cocaine in the state of Florida. I was 26 years old. I was facing a minimum mandatory of 15 years. That's day for day. If I take the case to trial and I lose, I could get sentenced to up to 30 years in prison. I cried, I cried, I cried, I cried. With crying, I made every promise to God. I said, God, if you get me out of this, I promise I'll be at church every Sunday in the front row. I'm at church every Sunday, I'm just not in the front row yet. But, um, <sighs> Growing up, I never knew who I was. As soon as I got locked up, I had a Jamaican roommate who passes me a New Testament Bible. And he goes, he said, start off reading Proverbs and Psalms. Then work your way into Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And through there, you'll figure out who Jesus Christ is. My mother at the time was handwriting out entire psalms for me and mailing them to me. After a while, I told my mom, I said, Ma, stop. They provide Bibles for us in here. All you have to do is just tell me what to read and I'll read it. And throughout that time, I'm in prison. I never knew who I was. I never knew what my purpose was. When I got to prison and I opened up that Bible and I started reading and started to allow the Holy Spirit to come into me, starting to allow the Holy Spirit to, to minister to me, to teach me, I started understanding why all my years growing up, it was so easy for me to do good. It was so it came natural for me to want to do good when i accepted christ as my lord and savior now i started to understand who i am because now i know whose i was so i stood in the county jail for about two and a half years trying not to go to prison i mean who wants to go to prison after a while, I started changing my perspective about prison. I don't know why, but I prayed and asked God, like, hey, God, if there's somebody in prison that needs to minister to me or you need me to minister to, well, then so be it. Crazy thing is, you got to be careful what you ask God for. Because the next day I had a dream, and that's how I found out that I was going to be sentenced to prison within that dream. In that dream, my mother calls my grandmother and my mother says hey you know jason's going to prison so at home everybody calls me jason so she goes hey jason's going to prison and my grandmother said yes i already know so the next morning i wake up i'm telling that story to somebody and i cried again the next week i had court and my attorney comes to me and he says I got some great news. That 15 year minimum mandatory sentence that you were looking at has been taken off the table. 
they're offering you five years and already served about two years and seven months. So I said, why not? In a few months, I'll be home. So I took the five years. And when I took the five years, I'm sitting there talking to God and I'm like, yo, God, man, like, I understand we all need to be taught a lesson, but like that? <laughs> and sometimes, you know, God's provisions, we don't accept God's provisions for us because they come in a problem. And sometimes when his provisions are wrapped up in a problem, we turn away from them. So I've, I've vowed to, I told God, hey, listen, man, you get me out of that. He got me out of it, but not the way that I wanted to, but he got me out of it, though. And um, that's why I'm here today. That's why I could stand here today and just, you know, just let everybody know how amazing God is. And that was just part of my testimony because my testimony is still moving forward. Um, another chapter to my testimony is my mom. Another part of my testimony is my mom that recently passed away in January. Oh, man. So your testimony just doesn't happen one time. Everybody you share your testimony with, even after you're dead and gone, your testimony will change lives, but all for the glory of God. So don't be afraid to tell your story because your story has power. And to God be the glory. Appreciate it. Thank you, Jesus, 
just as I am, I come. Hallelujah. Oh, what amazing love. Oh, thank you for. Kathy, for those that don't know me and you are new to the church, I'm going to share a very personal testimony that I have never shared with anyone, and this is going to be my first time. So just bear with me. Um, I was born in Honduras. My mom came to America at the age of when I was six years old. She left me and my brother behind with my grandmother. 
um, she paid a coyote. It's somebody that smugglers humans from the border of Mexico into America for her to come here. Um, she came here, she met my stepfather. She collected enough money to bring me and my brother here. Um, at the age of eight, my mother paid another coyote to bring me and my brother here. In the process of coming to America, you have to cross several countries. One of the countries that the coyote left me and my brother was Guatemala. In Guatemala, we were left at this abandoned house. In this abandoned house, there was no furniture, but just a bare floor. There was many people there, maybe a hundred old kinds, women, men, children. And we were all just left there. They would just bring us food whenever the time was there for us to get food, to get fed. And one night, as we all gathered and we all placed ourselves in a spot on the floor to sleep, I picked the closest spot to the door and I was there by myself while everybody else was everywhere else. And two men decided to lay next to me. And as I was there laying down, these two men planned to assault me, to sexually assault me. <laughs> and I'm listening to their conversation as one starts touching As one starts touching, I'm just praying, God, I just want to go to sleep. Please make this man go away. And as one stops, the other one says, it's my turn. But the other guy, the first, the one, the first one said to him, no more. Let's let her go to sleep. And I know that was God. Because I pray, Lord, I just want to go to sleep and I don't want to feel anything. So I know the Lord was there with me. Even though that happened, I know he was still there. On our process to America, we crossed Mexico. And Mexico were there for months because my mom didn't have enough money to cover the rest of the trip. When we come to America, you know, we live in our lives. We grew up Christian, but we came to America, we lost all of that. And as you know, I get older, you know, things just start happening again. And now it's not just strangers, but it's three men close to me and my family. Oh. Men that I love very much. And I lived many years just pushing it under the rug and being okay with it or just not thinking about it. I minimized the pain. I minimized, it was just a, um, a coping strategy that I just had, just minimizing that, being in denial that these three men in my life who are very close to me decided to do that and the two strangers in Walmara. Until last year, it was a very rough year for me. And God just started peeling the onion. And he just started showing me things. And when things are rooted in you, it's like a tree. There's branches that just start coming out. I was dealing with identity. I was dealing with fatherless. I was feeling with insecurity, trust issues. I was catching panic attacks. I became claustrophobic. I couldn't be anywhere close. My body was paralyzed because I was so scared. And every time these men would touch me, my, my body would be paralyzed. I, didn't, I couldn't move. I didn't know what to do. Jesus. 
actually last year, I had a true encounter with God. And I couldn't receive God as my true father, as my true heavenly father. I couldn't receive his love because I was so worried. I was so scared. I was panicking. I couldn't be in a room with a man by myself because I used to panic. I used to think they were going to do something to me. I couldn't be in my house alone with my brothers because I will get up and I will run. I couldn't take a shower because the memories would just come back. If they would come in, they would do something to me. But last year, I remember just sweeping before the Lord. And I said, God, I can't take this anymore. And he's like, I need you to surrender and give it all to me. And I need you to forgive them. And I said, how can I forgive somebody that hurt me? I grew up without a father, so I don't know what it is to have a father. I couldn't receive his love for me. I couldn't sit here and say, you know what, God, I trust you. I believe you. I couldn't. And I'm being honest. But that night when I wept for hours and hours and hours, God just wanted to love me. And I couldn't, I was so resistant. I was laying in my bed like a little kid when you take off a bobo and they're crying, weeping. And I'm like, Lord, I don't get it. I just don't get it. And he's like, I just want you to receive my love. I love you. And I came the next day to church and I sat here at the altar and I was just like, I forgive them every single one of them i forgive them because i am a sinner and you forgave me so i have to forgive them and see them with the eyes that you see them with the love that you see them i cannot look at their mistakes i cannot look at their sins but i have to see them the way christ sees them because he died on that cross for them just as he died on that cross for me and one of them is saved, thank God. The other two were praying, but God is so good. He is so faithful. He is the Father that heals. He is the Father that delivers. He is the Father that redeems. He is the faithful Father that even though we're going through pain, He is the God of the valley that steps in the fire with you. And He pulls you out of that and says, my daughter, walk in truth, in love. Jesus oh God and I don't share this to boast I don't share this because I just want to be up here I don't I don't want to be up here but you know what God is gonna do something and he's here to give you comfort and I'm gonna end with this second Corinthians 1 3 through seven says blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ the Father of mercies and God of all comfort who comforts us in all of our afflictions so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which our we ourselves are comforted by God for as we share abundantly in Christ's suffering so through Christ we share abundantly in comfort too if we are afflicted it is for your comfort and salvation. And if we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which, we are, which you experience when you patiently endure the same suffering that we suffer. Our hope for you is unshaken. For we know that as you share in our sufferings, you will also share in our comfort. So I share this because the God that I serve is mighty. The God that I serve, he heals. The God that I serve, men's broken hearts. And the God that I serve has freedom for you just like he has freedom for me. Jesus, you are holy, you are mighty, you are, man, you are powerful, God. 
You are a God of Jacob, of Isaac, and Abraham, oh God. You are a God, God, that is working generation through generations, oh God. You are a God, God, that is healing us today, God, to save our generations, oh God. You are a God that are do about something, oh God. Even if we don't understand, God, you are up to something. You are up to something, oh God. We don't need to understand with a tiny little mind, God, what you are doing in the earth. You are up to something, oh God. And we, we lift in a hallelujah to your name, Jesus, for what you have done. For what you have done. For what you have done in our life, oh God. We lift your name high. I don't know if you have a reason, but we, if you came with our reason, you got three. To worship his name. To worship his name. My God is not dead. My God is still heals. My God is still restored. Oh, I erase a hallelujah. Even in the middle of the storm. Thank you, God, that I don't have to understand what you're doing. Oh, God, I raised, I lift up my hands to my God, to my Savior, to the one that is still enough to heal. God, there is nothing that you cannot do. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. Oh, God, sorry for the time that we put you in that tiny box. Sorry for the times, God, that I suggest your will to my will, God. God, you are God. And you don't need our approval. You are God. You are God. And you are still enough to heal, to restore, to give light to the darkness, God, that we are walking. This reflection, I, God has spoke to me first. And God has spoke to all of us through these testimonies. It's not a coincidence that we are here, I don't have anything better to do, that's a lie. You have a di divine appointment We God, your healer, the one that is still sufficient. And when I was naming this, God, God brought me to all of my dark spot, the places that I don't want to go back again. Like Kathy, like Tardell, like Josh. The places that I know that I don't belong. But it was necessary that I went through whatever we went through. To have an encounter with the God of our salvation. And when I named everything, God was like, Marianne, you got to keep it 100. You're not better than anybody else. you also broken. you also restored. You also hurt. It was a touch from heaven. We sing it, we practice, we talk it, but it's a touch from heaven. There's nothing to do with me. And the Lord was specific when he named this, this um, exhortation. And he named it, the wound do not stop your destiny. And when I was reading, I went to the book of Jeremiah, as Tyrell says, and it's Jeremiah 29, 11, and the Lord said, For I know that all that I think toward you, says the Lord, no, Marianne, thought of peace and not of evil, to give you the expected end. And you may think, oh, I'm going to talk about this. No, 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 God brought me to jo Joseph. Joseph was betrayed. Joseph was uh, accused. Joseph was thrown into a pit. Joseph was sold into uh, like a slave. Joseph went to jail. Even in jail, the jail do not stop the destiny. The craziness do not stop what the Lord has planned the gift for God in your life. I may be a little twisted, but uh, the blood is still enough. And when the Lord brought me to Joseph, I was like, oh God. Craziness do not stop the hand of God. And I was broken because I, I, many times we forget when the, Lord, the, the places that the Lord brought us out of. 
Oh man, we we proud of ourselves. We we put a, a life. You have been do, go, doing good. No, 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 no. Remember. Remember. Remember that the wounds are still there, but they don't stop what the Lord says that He was about to do in your life. But even though Joseph finding himself in the middle of that pit, in the middle of that cells, in the middle of that, that jail, in the middle of that false accusation, accusation he finds favor. And I, I serve a God that shoes the one that were, were rejected, the one that were hurt, the one that are broken. I serve a God that shoes the least to do the more. And I am a least. I have never been chosen by men. Either Kathy, either Tyrell, either Josh. If we, for many of us, none of us will be here. But God, take the broken pieces that we are. The broken, the least that I am. And he's turned it for glory. Because when you're too perfect, he cannot use you. That's why I have to be broken. That's why I have to be Tyrell, Kathy, Josh. But despite of everything that he went through, Joseph, God was there. Not leave you, not forsake you, says the Lord. And I came to talk to a generation that says, Oh God, this is what I have. Empty-handed. My brokenness. Oh, my, my emptiness. My my false appearance of holiness. Do what only you can do. I cannot fix it. I cannot fake it until I make it. I need you to touch my wounds, oh God. And do not allow them to stop what you are about to do. And God also spoke to me about Isaiah 61.1. And the, the word of the Lord says, the spirit of the Lord, oh God, is upon me. Because the Lord have anointed me to preach the good news to whom? The poor. The Lord anointed me to send me to bind the wounds of the, of the ones that are broken hearted. To proclaim liberty to the ones that are captives. And to open the prison door to those who are bound. I don't know you, but I have a couple of baggages that I need to leave it right here, here today. I'm not living the way that I came. I'm not here to waste time. I need my healing. You may not like my worship, but I need to be healed. I came today to speak to a generation that says, Oh God, I recognize who you are. And I recognize that your blood is still sufficient to redeem. To redeem my brokenness, oh God. To restore what the enemy has stole away from me. The years that the life... That, that even myself didn't believe that you can do something better with what I am. Here I am, Lord. I don't know if you have a reason to worship, but the reason that, that just the fact that I'm here is a reason for me to lift up my hands. <laughs> Let the redeem of the Lord say so. I came to remind you that there is not a place in which God cannot go and get you. I came to remind you that there is not wound that he cannot heal. That there is not battle that he cannot fight. I need just one to understand that what the, what the devil has stole. That to tell the devil the whole thing you have in my life is going to end up today. The generational core is going to be broken today. Enough is enough. I don't worship for Marianne. Marianne can have her life figured it out. I worship because I don't want my daughters to fight the same devil that I'm fighting. 
right now because I'm not willing to let go whatever I need to let go and it's whatever it takes but I'm not leaving how I came if my healing is here come and get it here he's a father to the fatherless home to the homeless Many of you guys do not know my testimony, and I'm going to tell you today, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's another story. <laughs> but I know what it feels. The little that I can tell you, oh God, how can God use a mess person like I am? My father was a good father, but he was not present, it's true. But God is my father. And until I couldn't... Get it straight, the relationship with my early father, I couldn't see my heavenly fathers the proper way. And today I came to tell you, <sighs> that it's time to understand generation that we were called for such a time like this. Despite of your dysfunction, that we all have it. But you, it's your choice, it's your decision, it's your step forward to say, here is broken, enough. No more depression, no more anxiety, no more doubts, no more insecurity. I may fight with them, but I'm not going to let them stop me from the destiny that the Lord has for me. I don't know what my mouth fought for. But I know the responsibility that you carry on your shoulders. But we need to leave it here. Our hurts, our wounds, our brokenness, and this altar. I came to speak to people that says, Devil, what the human for evil got turned for my good. Joseph went through hell and back. But not even that. God was positioning Joseph for 400 years of provision for the people of Israel. What you're doing today is going to have repercussion in your future generation. Me standing here, and not in a language that I can manage pretty well, it's because I don't want my daughters to fight the same insecurity that I'm fighting today. And I... And we were anointing, not Miriam, not Kathy, not Charia. We were anointing to bring the good news to the poor. Not when you feel comfortable, that never gonna happen, first of all. But I'm ready to do what the Lord assigned me to do, even if I'm uncomfortable. And as I mentioned it before, oh God. I'm not going to let my wounds stop my destiny. Yeah. I'm not going to let the dysfunction that was passing into me, it wasn't me. It was passing into, to stop me when the blood is still enough today. Yeah. Yeah. God can restore. God is still heals. God is still choose people who are not worth it. But for his glory, for his glory, for his glory, for his glory, devil, you meant it for evil, but God turned it for our good. And I'm going to ask you to get up. We got a couple of generational courses that are going to be broken today. I don't know if you are ready, but take out your sword. What you meant for evil, God turned it for my good. I may be that hurt, but not destroy. God, you the God that gives guidance to the reckless. You are the God that heals the wound, oh God. The deepest secret, oh God. Your blood is still sufficient. I'm going to ask you, if you need to come to the altar and leave your baggage right here. Your kids do not got to carry what's passing into you. The curse is going to be broken today. Do not care about what, what somebody else is doing. 
If you need to break the curse, it's going to be broken in the name of Jesus. Enough is enough. Devil, you lost the hope that you had in our life. We believe what the Lord says that we are. I stand in your faithfulness, oh God. I stand in your, we stand in your faithfulness. Devil, say whatever you got to say. But it is written. It is written. I serve a God that break every curse. Not one, all of them. God, we worship you tonight, oh God. We worship you. We worship you. You are a miracle, God, oh God. You take less, God, and do more. Thank you, God, that you are a God of multiplication, oh God. Thank you, God, that you, through us you're going to bless the nations, oh God. Thank you, God, that uh, through us, God, you're going to set the captives free, oh God. God, today, today we surrender. We surrender our ways, oh God. We surrender our will, oh God, to you. We don't want anything, God, that do not come from you, oh God. We don't want our kids to carry what we haven't been, we haven't dealt with, oh God. God, is cheap us, oh God. Clean us, God. Heal our wounds, oh God. Heal our wounds, oh God. Heal our wounds, oh God. Areas of our heart, God, that only you can go. Father, fight, God. Battles that only you can win. Oh God, we worship you. We're going to worship you until every, 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 everything, God, it goes away. We're going to worship you, oh God. Until every curse is broken, oh God. We're going to worship you, oh God. Until demons tremble at the mention of your name. We bless your name, Jesus. We bless your name, Jesus. Jesus. Your blood is sufficient, oh God. Forgive us, oh God. Forgive us, oh God, for being so selfish. Your blood is sufficient to heal. The broken hearted, oh God, you heal. To restore the years that the enemy has stole from us, oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Even when my mom and my dad left me, God, you pick me up. You never left me, oh God. There is a people here, God. There is a body, God, that says, God, heal us. Heal. 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 You are the healer, oh God. By your stripe, by God. All wounds are healed, oh God. Your blood is sufficient, oh God. To redeem. To redeem. There is not a sin, God, that you cannot forgive, oh God. You are a restorer. We worship you. Like Joshua says this morning, we're not going to let our rocks to cry out, oh God. We lift your name high. We don't need music to worship you, oh God. We have more than a reason to worship your name, Jesus. Worthy, worthy, worthy is the land that redeem us to all, from all of our sins, oh God. Blessed is the Lord. Blessed is the Lord. Your name, Jesus. We worship you. We worship you until every, 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 every thought of who you are disappear, oh God. Take our brokenness, oh God. Take our emptiness and fill us up, oh God. Let your anointing flow, oh God. Oh, I 
know that my Redeemer is alive. Yeah. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. Yeah. You are enough to us, oh God. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Oh, let it hurt so it can heal. Let it hurt so it can heal. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. Your reward 
If you're searching for a heart as your reward, then I am yours. And I am yours. Then I am. Then I am yours. Then I. the sacrifice I want to be a laid down lover all my life I want to be the oil I want to be the sacrifice I want to be the laid down lover all my life I want to be the oil be the sacrifice. I want to be a laid down lover all my life. I want to be the oil. I want to be the sacrifice. I want to be a laid down lover all my life. I want to be the oil. Sacrifice. I want to be a laid down lover all my life. I want to be the oil. I want to be the sacrifice. I want to be a laid down lover all my life. And oh. You're searching for a heart as your reward. If you're searching for a heart as your reward, then I am yours. I am yours. I am yours. Then I am. Then I am yours. Hey guys, how are you doing? Uh, my name is Matthew. I'm just up here to basically close us out in prayer and that's pretty much about it. So if everybody could please bow, bow their heads and close their eyes. <clears throat> Thank you, Father God, for this moment, Lord. Thank you for a moment, Lord, where we get to take time out of our day. Even though we might have come here in the morning, thank you for bringing us here again, Father God, because this is a new word, Lord. Testimonies were being spoken of, Father, and you can just see how many people just changed through the testimony, Father. People have been saved. People have been saved, Father God. So I, I hope that anybody here that has been struggling with you, Father God, anybody that has been far away from you or somebody that has never encountered you, Lord, may be saved through something related to this, Father God. If there's any hearts, Father God, that, that is stone, if there's any hearts that are stone, Father God, I pray that that heart may turn into flesh. I hope, Father God, that your, that your beauty and your grace, Father God, may, may afflict somebody's hearts if there's something, if there's any spirit, Lord, that's like tugging somebody just to get close to you, just to get near to you, just to have an encounter with you, Father God, I pray that it may go through, Lord. I pray, Father God, for this night. I pray for this night to always be a remembrance of, of a way of us to come back to you, a way that, 
a way that we may understand that whatever situation that we may be going through or what we're going through like right now, that it doesn't have to stay that way, but through you, Jesus, that we, that we find victory, God, that we may find freedom, Lord. So I pray, God, that anybody that's in this place, Lord, anybody that hasn't received you, anybody, anybody that just wants you, that isn't, anybody that's not thirsty for you, that anybody that's not hungry for you, Father God, that you may restore that feeling, Father, that there may be a fire in their hearts, Lord, just to be thirsty for you, that they just want to have more of you, and that they may always continue, continue, and never be satisfied, and never feel complete, Lord, because we need you daily, Father God. Allow us to have this have this emotion, allow us to have this feeling, Father God, that we can go throughout our days without wanting you, without receiving you, God. So I pray, Lord, that any moment throughout our day that we do not spend with you, that we may, that our hearts may urge and urge just to get closer to you. So Father God, I thank you, Lord. I thank you for this moment. Thank you for the new people that we may meet. And I pray for traveling mercies, Lord. Allow us to get home safely, Father. And in Jesus' name I pray, amen.